this one. So how are the practices after the going over all the time? You know, they've been spirited. You know, we're fortunate that we're still in a position where we're playing for something. Um, and so they've been, they've been good. Is it, uh, I was going to say, well, thank you. Very much. <laughs> okay. so, is it fitting that the last game in this conference between you and Syracuse has something at stake for you guys? I think so. Uh, I, I, do, I do think um, that it is very fitting. Uh, just when you look at uh, you know, what the two programs have meant to each other, uh, what the programs have meant to um, the Big East, it is fitting that on the last time we played as conference members, <clears throat> excuse me, last time we played as conference members, you know, you come down that it's it's for some. The things this rivalry has meant to you over this year is obviously the, the big focus is tomorrow's. But you know, as you're preparing for this game, I'm sure you know every things are jumping in your ear about you know games of years past and the like. Okay, so what's the question? The question is things this rivalry has meant to you. Over it's, it's been a lot, and, and, and most of my memories are that as a fan, uh, you know, who literally grew up with the Big East, who grew up with this robbery. You know, you guys should, I'm not, I'm not I'm going to come back, you guys should interview the gentleman over there who's mm -hmm. been a part of uh, much more of this robbery than I have, and been intimately involved in some of the more heated moments uh, associated with this robbery. But, you know, as a fan growing up, you know, you grow up with the Bees, you grow up with Syracuse, Georgetown. You know, you go back to, and I remember, you know, watching Marty Head, uh, Lewis or Roosevelt Bowie, those teams going against John Dern, Craig Shelton, you know, on through tomorrow. And so it's, it's, it's been special. Now, you guys have heard me say over and over again that intercollegiate athletics is going through an evolution, which we are, and, and change is here. Um, but the Big East is something that, that I know that we know, and it's going to be missed. This, this rivalry is, in as much as we still will play, um, but it's not going to be the same, you know, playing a random home and home with an opponent as opposed to, to having a conference foe, a conference rival, a conference, a, you know, opponent where you're going to play twice a year, sometimes three times a year. And just the nature of the success of both programs have been, every game usually means something, so that will be missed. Is it fair to say that Trish is kind of a barometer for their success? It seems as though when he's offensively aggressive and hitting shots, they're much better. Uh, I never thought about that like that, Ron, but that probably, I probably could agree with that. But then I sit here and think, you know, the way CJ's been playing, I'm like, say CJ's the barometer. Um, and we all know that, 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 that Carter Williams, and so I, I don't know. I don't know. I think they have multiple people that can step up and take it to the next level. And so I don't want to just put that on him, but, but when he plays well, they play well. Given um, Otto's 33 points against them last time, are you expecting a different defensive treatment of him, or have you given much thought to the way they'll no, I haven't the tension thought, haven't thought about it. <laughs> I haven't, didn't think about it at all. We're just going to show up and roll the balls out and say, make shots, boys. Uh, that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> at my expense, <laughs> like, laugh away. Right? Um, no, uh, uh, do, do, can, am I sitting here saying, hey, I'll go get 33 again? I don't think you can go out expecting that. I think we just, what we focus on against them is, is the kind of shots we get, different shots we get, trying to find a way to get shots. They do a good job of making it impossible um, to get quality shots. And then if you get a couple, then they take away that, and then you have to find out where the next hole is. Now, one, Good thing, I think I can say, um, in, in, in breaking down and analyzing the, that game film, is everyone else got looks that they normally make that they missed. Um, and so, you know, you go back and look at some of the other guys, bang some of the open looks that they got. Uh, you may not need that 33 point effort, but we're not going into the same. Okay, let's do the exact same thing. I'll let you go out and 30 plus and everyone else just, just make a shot here and there. One guy that might have been off their radar for sure would be on it now, be Jabril last night. I thought he played very well. Do you expect him to, off, to trigger your offense as much as he did the last game this time around? No, I thought he did a very good job of picking his spots and, 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 and attacking when he should attack. Um, and so, you know, he was he played, as you can think, very well against him the last game. But, you know, in spite of or in 
addition to uh, all those points, what Jabril's contributions and Moses' contributions were the keys to, to that point there. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. You never, uh, never want to lose, of course, but does that Villanova loss did it, did it make it easier in any way or help you from a coaching perspective getting guys here this year? No, uh, not at all. I'm not one that thinks that losing helps. Uh, and, and you know, when people make those statements, the assumption is that the group was not focused, was not attentive. And this group has, has pretty been keen all year. And so uh, I don't necessarily think, ooh, because we lost, hey, we're much more focused in um, today than we were three, four days ago. I don't think so at all. The turnovers <coughs> against Villanova, um, kind of there still look back. What was, was it more about what you guys were doing or what, what, what their defense? Um, it was us. It was us. I mean, we, we the 22 turnovers uh, was, was uh, an inordinate amount for us. Turn the ball over when you get the slap and held and push and the refs aren't calling. Yeah, you held them. Don't write that. You held them to 46 up there. You've held more than a few teams to 150 points this winter. What what set this team apart defensively? What's made them special? I don't know. I, I know from 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 this summer, from day one, I knew and then conveyed the message to them that if we're going to win, we're going to be a good defensive team. Uh, and I think that the guys immediately bought in. I think that they have done a very good job on most nights, um, and hopefully tomorrow, no, no exception, um, of helping each other. You know, understanding. You know, a lot of times as a defender, I can get locked into I'm guarding you, and I have to stop you, and I forget about everything else that's going on. Um, but I think our guys have done a good job of helping each other uh, in, in all areas of defense, and we've been pretty successful most of the year, most nights. We have a few. A few hiccups, but most most nights were pretty good. What would it mean to you to win the regular season title? A lot. Anything added, knowing that you're leaving for the new Big East next year? Anything added? I mean, is it is it put more more, more, special, more, more special? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, this is you know Georgetown Syracuse is a big game. Any time, any regular season. All right. Uh, the fact that it's the last game of this year makes it that much more of a big game. The fact that it's the last time we're going to be playing as conference opponents, that then adds on to it. And then the fact that, you know, if we win, we win, uh, you know, that adds on to it. So, no, this isn't just your normal 10th game of the year, let's go play because all games are important. This, this absolutely it has special meaning for all of those factors. Since a statement was put out this afternoon about the official split, comment on the end of that one era and starting a new era next year? Well, we're excited. Uh, I think the, the, the and I don't need to speak for all seven schools, but the schools that are breaking off, we, we, we're excited uh, to start a new chapter. The biggest, Big East has been something that has been special to me personally um, and to everyone that's been involved with it. Um, but, you know, we're in an era of change and and you know, we, it's as much as that that one segment, uh, that that one era, that one time of, of the, the, the the Big East is is will always be special. It always be, mean a lot to Daryl Owens, former player here, <laughs> class of uh, what? What are you DJ 06? You don't remember when you got your degree? Okay. <laughs> one of the best shooters I've ever coached. <laughs> Um, you know, and those memories and that time is, is special. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's time for change. Speaking of old players, how much have they contacted you about, not only this game, but changing in the Big East? Have they contacted players? Some come, I mean, yeah, yes, both, both. Are, you know, one, one, the Mexican did the wrong time. Why did he give me a contract? Damn it. I need to know. Darn it, Max, I mean. <laughs> um, what were you saying? What was the question? Have the, uh, the alumni, have the ex players, have they contacted you and the guys about ending the rivalry, league changing? Well, well, I'll say this. I, I, I got to think that with 35,000 plus 
don't, I think they have probably had a lot easier job accommodating ticket requests <laughs> than, I'm, than, I'm, than I'm having for tomorrow. Oh, uh, but yes, absolutely. I mean, a lot. He's in town for the game. A lot of players that are coming in town. He's in town. Brandon Bowman. Several people from his team. Not, not the whole team. Because but, but I'll go so far as most of his team is going to be in town. Uh, and, and a lot of other guys are coming back. So they've definitely been in touch with me. And some of them, you know, depending on the years of the overlap, definitely been in contact with our coach. Coach, we have a radio interview. You got to get to. We do? Yeah, so we wrap you? this up, please, guys. Last two questions. I, this is a small question, but you guys aren't planning anything special at halftime, are you? You know, like they retired Carmelo's jersey at the halftime of your game. It was a big momentum, in theory. I don't know the answer. I honestly don't know. Okay. That's a Well, that's bug mess. Advanced, but, I mean, there's no, like, reunion of the of class of blah, no, blah, blah. No. Okay. Senior day for Pat and Harvey? That's before the game. <laughs> That's before the game. We got senior day okay. for, for our two guys. Jack the dog getting in. He is retired. Yeah, he is retired. Yes. Yes. That okay. was his last yeah. game. You retired, do you hang up his you know, water dish? His his a special box. A special box. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> got a few other things to focus on. <laughs> we have not just competent, but excellent staff that's going to figure all those questions out. I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you.